Yeah, Friday. What's up, everybody? Friday morning. Welcome to today's edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I'm your host, Chuck Fulkerson. Hope everybody had a phenomenal, phenomenal Thursday as we are about to roll into Friday, wrap up the week, taking a look at the markets as we've come to a brand new all-time high. And we're going to look and see what does that mean for you, especially on contract rollover day of our equities futures market. So let's go ahead and dive in. If you're new to the channel, do me a favor, click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you get the alerts and the updates. Um, and, uh, and let's go ahead and get started with the big picture. So starting with the big picture, we can see that we have our contract rollover to the U contract this morning. So um, rolling over off of the M onto the U, time is just flying, uh, and you know, if we stayed on that M contract, I'm just going to pull the M up real quick. We can see that just staying on the M contract, we actually are sitting right at a potential breakout point. But we're not going to be trading the M contract. We're trading the U contract. Uh, but that means that we that 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 breakout could still be valid. Um, if I just put that U up here, you'll see, you know, kind of what that is. So so while. While it doesn't look like there's a potential breakout, there actually is a potential breakout above this region. Um, and so I wouldn't really, you know, we are sitting at the gap, the contract rollover gap uh, on this position. That's actually, uh, you know, one of the things that we do tend to look for is the contract rollover. But I'm going to, you know, maintain my overall bullish stance and keep an eye on this 15-minute level right in here for a potential reversal as we come into that region. Let's see if we get a reversal off of that level. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the NASDAQ. And the NASDAQ also, um, we are we, we actually didn't see really any change on the rollover on the, the, the U contract and the NQ. Um, and it is still not at a new all-time high. We're getting there, but we ain't there yet. Um, but we, you know, we kind of hit that four-hour supply where I said that I anticipated as basing in front of and then giving us a little breakout. So those of you that took that, you've gotten, you know, about a about a 40 or 50 point move out of that breakout region um, the second time we came back up into it. Now, we uh, if you didn't get there and you want to give uh, a little bit of a retest to try that 15 minute level that we just found in the S&P is also pre prevalent in the Nasdaq. If we come down a bit lower, you do also have this little area right here. Wrong drawing tool selected. So keep an eye on this little level right here, 13,910. Um, if we don't reverse right up here at this area, then this 13,910, 13,897 is also valid. So overall, keep the bullishness kind of in check. That, uh, that you know, I, I don't know that I'd be buying right at the open, uh, but I definitely think you could get a, a retest on a pullback to some of these areas. The Russell we talked about, interestingly enough, the Russell we talked about as our as our uh, strongest market and looking for that breakout, the Russell's actually pulling back in the last few days. Uh, and the pullback that we're seeing in the Russell, we came back to our area of demand, and now we're basing in front of it. The Russell is actually significantly weaker than the other two markets. So just keep that in mind when looking at our, uh, our equity markets is the weakness that we are seeing in the Russell. So if you think that we're going to have a bit of a bearish day, the Russell below here would be the way to go um, on, a, on a bit more of a bearish day. Uh, taking a look at crude oil. So looking at crude oil, we, we've talked about the fact that we're looking to buy on pullbacks. We did get a retest to some of our areas of demand. Let me take uh, some of these out. And then we had a huge kind of just a whoop, whoop move. Uh, that's the technical trading term. Whoop, whoop. Um, you know, was it wicked way down, wicked right, right into demand and then right back up. Uh, and so I'm going to remove some of these areas. Clear out some of those. Uh, and then the next level that I think would make the most sense to be looking for would be off of the smaller time period. This one here is a really clean level. Nice strong move away, right at 70, whole round number. 
Now, 70 was our price target on oil a long time ago, and we've gotten above that area. So is this rally getting a bit long in the tooth? I think it is. Um, I think this rally is getting a bit long in the tooth. And so uh, just be a bit more cautious. Uh, I, I feel like it's, uh, it's going to continue to go up until it stops, but I think that, the, that our upside rally is getting long in the tooth. We've hit our price target of 70. Um, could we see 80? Yeah, I guess we could. I mean, there's no question. Um, but wait for a, I think you, we may see a bit of a pullback to this 65, 66 region soon. All right. And then last but certainly not least is gold. We've maintained our bullish bias in gold overall. We got uh, this gold demand area where we based in front of the level. We got a nice touch and go off of it. Um, and then we were basing in front of it through here. Uh, but then the real good demand level, which is the one that we talked about on Wednesday's DMC, was the origin of this move. We hit that yesterday and got a really strong move away from that level. So hopefully you're able to catch that and get a little run out of that trade. And so now, if I take a look at this, I would look for a potential breakout trade above here. That's going to be my best setup. Now, overnight, we've really sold off pretty hard in gold. Um, but that, that still actually just gives me my third touch, allowing for a better breakout if price comes back into there. From a demand standpoint, I really don't have super clear demand. I mean, I could go to the 15-minute, but even on the 15-minute, none of this is very clear. And we know that this is a retest of this area here to the left. So if you want to go with the daily trend and the much smaller time frame on, uh, on gold, uh, you know, you, you could look to this little wick over wick area right here or even this pivot and just take a short for today. From a four-hour standpoint, we are kind of meh, a little sideways. So I still like the overall breakout on the longer time periods. Um, but I'm okay if you take an intraday short off one of these levels. So those are our big four major markets heading into the weekend. Obviously, make sure that you remember that if we're heading into the weekend, uh, that you keep in mind the potential for gap exposure and gap risk. But let's talk about our stock of the day. So the stock of the day we're going to talk about today is PNC, PNC Financial Services Group, uh, PNC Bank, uh, as, they, uh, as it's located in Pittsburgh, uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You know, as, as a Pittsburgh Pirate fan that play in PNC Park, um, I'm bearish on PNC because I'm bearish the Pirates. No, uh, we, had a, uh, we actually did have a pretty nice move on PNC on a breakout trade. This was a, a position that we had talked about a couple of months ago. Uh, and we got a decent move out of that level, about $20 a share. Well, now we're seeing a lot of weakness. And yesterday we put in a bearish engulfing candle on the daily chart. And that bearish engulfing candle on a daily chart is always something to pay attention to. And so when I trim down to the hourly level, I look at where is a decent level of supply to get short. You have a really nice level of supply right here at 190.08 by 190.67. Now, if we look at our bid and our offer, we're trading at 187 by 193. So the chances of us opening up at 190 are actually pretty good. And I think that old resistance oftentimes acts as new support. Uh, that would actually be a really nice entry point for a potential intraday short um, on this position. Uh, if you wanted to stay in it a bit longer, you, could, you, can, you can do candle to candle and just get short below yesterday's low and wait for price to get below yesterday's low. Um, if you wanted to go that route and then your stop goes above yesterday's high with, I think, your target, um, I think, your, I think your, your best and hot, most, most highly lucrative target is going to be this area down here, which, by the way, becomes a really nice area of demand for a potential reentry. But if we break below here, I think that there's really not a whole lot to stop it. Obviously, take some money off the table at two to one. So, um, PNC Bank, I think a pretty good bearish setup and a, and a decent bearish opportunity for the day. But that's all I have for today, everybody. Uh, have, a, have a great weekend. Have a safe weekend. And I will talk to you Sunday night in the live trade room. See ya. Hey, thanks for joining us. If you like what we do, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's the only way the computers know that you're actually alive and really care. And go to tradersarmy.com today to learn a bit more. And if you want to see some of our other videos, click here in the box.